All right, hello and welcome back to Ashkabat Cats. Let's play that. Today we're taking a look at Phalanx. Well, I have not seen such an expansive, story-based cutscene intro thing since Iridion 3D. Uh, let's see, game level easy, stock, ah, oh, you can't go up to 20. Uh, ooh, you can change the speed of the thing from the actual- oh, how helpful. Oh, okay, I thought for a second, like, the button config, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you can have type A or type B. What's type A? What's type B? <laughs> well, why don't you find out? Uh, speed though, you don't get any sort of idea of what's happening. Sound test? What do you need sound test for? Alright. Well, Phalanx. It's a shoot 'em up for the Game Boy Advance. Not much more to say, really. Well, there's not much more to say. I mean, the Game Boy Advance did not. Ooh, it's a side scrolling shoot 'em up. Okay. And I feel like Phalanx came out for older systems at some point, but, uh, eh, who knows? Honestly. Oh, okay, so second button is bomb, L and R, don't really do much. Select changes your speed, which is mildly helpful at times, but honestly, I think you should just keep it on the default speed. And uh, otherwise, oh, how handy. Okay, so you can charge up a shot. Otherwise, you just press A and then you go for it. Oh, but that means no auto fire. Thanks, Game Boy Advance. You know everything I want you to have. Well, so that being said, th there were not many shoot 'em ups for Game Boy Advance, so to have any sort of shoot 'em up, no matter how old, it's not a bad thing. Especially because one of the premier shoot 'em ups was Gradius, actually. Now, Gradius was a big name in the arcades, like in the mid 90s. Uh, this came out in like early 2000s, so it had been a while, shall we say. Now, to be fair, there had not been, like, any new major hot shoot-'em-ups, or at least any shoot-'em-ups that you would expect to have even a hope of a prayer of running on the Game Boy Advance. So, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense there weren't shoot-'em-ups on the Game Boy Advance, but, like, if I think back on it, I can't think of any sort of, like, notable omissions or anything, because if you think about it, Gradius was, like, one of the hotti hottest uh, NES games, like, way back in the day. But, like, now it's just kind of, eh, shoot-'em-ups are a nice addition to a system's ecosystem, but it, a game ecosystem, but they're never really, like, the main draws. So I haven't quite decided whether this game is running well or poorly. On one hand, like, I feel like there are minor graphical inconsistencies and various weird things going on. On the other hand... It does seem to be running it with no complaints, and honestly, this looks, well, it looks a heck of a lot better than a Super Nintendo game. Well, okay, it looks like a Super Nintendo game with slightly bigger textures. But honestly, given that the Game Boy Advance could be possibly derided as just a portable Super Nintendo, then for it to actually exceed that Super Nintendo moniker is not bad. Uh, let's see, other major shoot-'em-ups for the system 
Viridian 3D. Now that one was kind of interesting because it was actually 3D based. I mean, the title would have you believe that. But, uh, I mean, that wasn't necessarily a good thing. But it did showcase something that you did not get a whole lot of on the uh, Super Nintendo. So, did I change weapons? Oh, oh, what, what, is, what is happening? Is this intentional? Okay. Uh, so it looks like we have way more weapons than just the default ones. Although I have no idea what the heck is happening. I guess we had superpowers stored up or something? And this shot does not charge. But it does have auto-fire. So I'm willing to accept this as the one true shot. Oh, good god. I I'm not entirely sure if P is the life gauge or the power-up meter for your power-ups. I guess in a certain sense, they're the same thing. But, uh... Jeez, Louise, this game does not make anything easy to understand. And there wasn't, like, any sort of how-to-play. Well, maybe there was a how-to-play after that big ol' intro, but... After about a minute of people talking, it's like, you, you really just want to get to the shoot 'em up part of the shoot 'em up right? The story can wait for later. In fact, the game can tell you the story when you beat it. And you can be like, oh, okay, I was fighting the Dark Lord Magician Magid, or whatever. Sure, yeah, I'll buy that. Even though you were, like, in a spaceship the entire time. Yeah, okay, it's a fantasy-based world. They just have spaceships. That'd be kind of weird if you had, like, a fantasy world, but, like, they could use magic, but they could only use magic to craft things. And so they crafted, like, more and more impressive things, but, like, they couldn't use magic for the typical kind of fire, ice, wind, wind water sort of thing. Food for thought. If you want to take that idea, just go ahead. Uh, don't even try crediting me, because, like, if you had to credit a random YouTube video on the internet, then it's like, uh, don't even bother. Just, just steal the idea. And then to me, it was, like, kind of interesting, because it mirrored my shots. It was also sort of ineffectual, because it was almost always in my shot range. But, that's cool too. Did that enemy just exist solely to give me a power-up? Also, I get that there's a warning, but when does the thing that we're warned about start? Well, okay, there we go. So far, an easy boss. Easy boss, not even any surprises. Uh, I wonder if you can attack it from the back. Um, unfortunately, we lost all those shield things, so... Oh, look, it tracks me. How clever. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet, because if I'm quiet, this boss battle will be easy. If I'm talking, this boss battle will not be easy. Now, fun fact... While I'm playing video games, I can actually put my mind in a low power state and continue talking. So this allows me to speak fluently while I'm playing the video game and focus solely on the video game. With the downside that I have no conscious control over what it is I'm saying. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I kind of do this on every shoot 'em up I've played, and so I'm doing it on this one too. Alright, boss looks- okay! Easy boss! Easy boss! Wow. That was a good four minutes, I'd say, of gameplay. And, uh, we beat the stage. So, okay. I mean, granted, we are playing on easy, but hey, no, I mean, you gotta start somewhere in a game- oh, wow. So the thing I'm most impressed about with this level it's just the transparency of the water. Now, it's not like the Super Nintendo didn't have transparencies back in the day, but I feel like this transparency is done just a little bit more professionally and a little bit more technologically inclined. So, it is kind of cool, because, like, the Game Boy Advance, it is more modern than the Super Nintendo. It's not necessarily, like, more powerful entirely, but it's... Oh, the water pushes you back! which makes sense from a physics perspective, but is annoying from a gameplay perspective. And so, like, the Game Boy Advance, it's... Oh, if you're gonna be like this, what's what's next? Are we gonna start doing, like, a Battletoads sort of nonsense? Oh, and the answer is yes. We are absolutely going to do a Battletoads sort of nonsense. How did you guess? And so you'd expect the Game Boy Advance to at least have some technological advantages every now and then. I mean, it has a lower resolution screen, it can't show as many colors, its audio channels are worse. I mean, 
if you looked at all those, you'd expect, hey, this, this was made before the Super Nintendo, that's why it's worse. But no, there's gotta be something. And it is always fun to see, like, all of these games that are very much based on, like, 1990s pop culture, early 2000s pop culture, on the system that whose gameplay is actually far more reminiscent of the Super Nintendo than anything else. I mean, they, they made some, like, Jedi games for it, and it's like, the Jedi games go over, like, episode 1, 2, 3, and whatever, but the way they actually play is just like the Super Nintendo uh, Star Wars games. So it's just, like, this weird mashup, semi-unintentional, of course, between the modern day and the old. And I guess it kind of helps you uh, imagine what those games would have felt like if they actually were on the Super Nintendo. Of course, they might actually be a slight bit better on the Super Nintendo, but let's, let's not go there too much. Yeah, it seems like this is sort of a Gradius game, but I gotta admit Gradius was a little bit more palatable. Like, like Gradius would constantly have, like, spectacle going. This game, like, it's a little bit harder, so you have to, like, be awake, but it's not, like so hard that you really... Well, okay, let's revise that statement. Like, this game actually has some difficulty to it, like Radius, you can just kind of close your eyes and just kind of sleepwalk your way through the game. But this game, like, there are environmental hazards, there are enemies that shoot maybe a few too many missiles at you. You definitely... Like, dying is a possibility. And, based on the, uh, limited lives, even though we're uneasy and we started with far too many lives to begin with, then running out of lives and stopping our fun adventure is a legitimate concern. Can you imagine if we did not get to play through the entire game? How sad would that be? Still, having the interesting water stage... Oh my god, this is worse than Super Mario. As the second stage is kind of interesting, and it does make me somewhat optimistic to figure out just what kind of stuff is coming out ahead. So, I guess if the dividers have a little red tip at the end, then they, uh, run at you. Oh, okay. So it respawned me just like- oh, those aren't power-ups. Those are bad things. Okay. I thought I was gonna complain, it's like, oh, it waited so long to respond me that I couldn't collect that, uh, green thing. But it turns out that green thing was a bad thing anyway, so... Okay, fair enough, game. Touché, you win. What's there to say about the music? It, it exists, it's there, it's, it's playing its heart out, but it's not necessarily succeeding. But it's it's kind of what you need for a shoot 'em up. I mean, can you imagine playing a shoot 'em up in silence? You'd basically be playing Space Invaders at that point. Oh, speaking of a Space Invaders game with amazing music, Space Invaders Extreme. Now that was an awesome reimagining of Space Invaders. In fact, on the DS, it even came out with a special paddle wheel controller. I specifically bought one of those from Japan. It cost like 40 bucks. It was not cheap, but it was in every way worth it. Oh man, those were good times. Those were good times. Oh yeah, I mean, I've said this before, but in like a random video somewhere. I wonder if they let you emulate the paddle controller on the DS emulator. Wow, we are just tearing through these lives. But like, I think at one point we had like 7 or 10 or some nonsense, so we're only at 4 right now. I don't think we'll be able to beat the game, but I feel like we'll be able to make a pretty good dent in it. Ooh, okay, this boss. He doesn't look so tough. Okay, this boss seems impossible. I'm not entirely sure how any human is supposed to be able to beat this guy. Yeah, thanks, boss, with your cheap, non-telegraphed attack patterns. Okay, did I, did I outsmart him by just shooting at him while he was vulnerable? I guess that might be what makes easy mode easy, rather than hard. Is this it? After this I'll get to go to stage 3? Is that, is that the deal? That can't be it, can it? All hail the glorious easy mode. The thing I don't like about this game, though, is there's just... It, it takes a lot of time to play through these stages, but not like a lot of stuff happens. Now I realize that, okay, this is, this is a shoot 'em up for the Game Boy Advance, so you gotta like fill up time, basically. Because if you play through it and you beat it in like an hour, well, yeah, that's true. We are well on track to beat this game within like an hour. 
I guess if you can play through the game and beat it in like 20 minutes, then you're going to be like a little bit disappointed. You're going to be like, no matter how fast-paced the experience could be, but again, it's on the Game Boy Advance, so there's only as fast-paced as it can be. Then you'd be a little bit disappointed. But I don't know, maybe they should have gone a bit more like a silent scope sort of model. Where you make it so difficult, like, you, you can't possibly beat it on one credit. Like, when they made Metal Slug Advance, they made it so it was this big, long adventure game where, like, you had to be actually really good if you wanted to beat the game to an acceptable degree. Whereas, uh... Yeah, no, that's... as opposed to, like, porting, like, a Metal Slug game where you just input a bunch of credits. Now, that kind of makes me wonder, is, like, why did they do Metal Slug 7? Exclusive to the Nintendo DS, no less. Okay, this... this level just has no semblance of fairness. You just have these, like, stupid pink worms that just go everywhere. And they get in everything. And they just can't be dodged. Although I'm doing, currently, a very good job of it. But, honestly, I don't expect that streak to last. Also... Uh, place your bets on what the final boss will be. Uh, your choices are generic robot thing that looks like some sort of piece of heavy construction machinery, or pink worm. Uh, my bets are on pink worm, but I realize that construction machinery is probably the smart bet. And further raising questions of, is that the power-up gauge or the life gauge, uh, we collected some power-ups and I believe the life gauge went back to full. Thus making me wonder if it is in fact actually the power-up gauge. Yeah, like, it's not a bad shoot 'em up and there's stuff is happening, so I do feel, like, engaged and I do feel challenged, but everything's happening so slow. It's kind of like for the Super Nintendo, where the Super Nintendo had a slower processor than the Genesis, so while it did have, like, ports of a lot of the best shoot 'em ups they either tended to rely on, like, kind of Mode 7 trickery, like, expanded colors or whatever to look pretty, or they just kind of went slow. And uh, the Genesis, now you can have some pretty fast-paced games, like Afterburner 2, that is a crazy fast-paced game. But uh, you get this game, and it's like, the Super Nintendo was no spring chicken with regards to a CPU, but I'm pretty sure the Game Boy Advance was even slower somehow. Or if it only just the same. And so now that we have this game, yeah, we're seeing all that slow, Super Nintendo mentality permeating to everything in. So I'm basically screwed right now, huh? With respect to... Uh, uh, okay. I'm using my bombs, but still no effect. But then I picked up a power-up, and now I'm at full power-up power. So does that mean I'm also at full life, too? You know, now that I... I can't quite remember, was Phalanx a game on the Super Nintendo as well? Was the game basically the same? On the Super Nintendo? That just... almost the mind. Maybe the Super Nintendo will have an like, honest-to-goodness manual, and then we can find out just what half the stuff is and what it is we're doing here. Oh, okay. So apparently that tablet is an enemy? It looks like a record of human knowledge, but sure, I guess it's an enemy. Oh, I figured it was something special. As, as it turns out, it's just another type of enemy that kind of listlessly attacks us, but still changing things up, I guess, in this long, long slog. Man, if I was a kid, though, and I had this game, I probably would have loved it because it would have made it feel like playing forever. Because, like, usually when I was a kid, I played the Game Boy Advance. It's like I played it during, like, sort of a downtime. It's like, okay, got a quick... 30 minute break before school, play some video games. But it's like, man, you play this game, and uh, it'll feel like you had like a three hour break before school. And you get to school, and you're like, man, I'm tired already, and I just woke up. But actually playing this now, it's kind of like, hmm, I don't know. It's just kind of slow. Oh, although we do have homing, oh, that's not gonna help. Oh, okay. 
I thought for a second you would have had to have destroyed the rock, but it turns out you can't destroy the rock. So what can you do? But then there is an enemy right below, so now I'm through. Although, I did use a bomb to find out. <laughs> oh, the, the system number, it says hit me. Oh, I, I get it. You're supposed to hit the boss. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not even funny. It's just, I've been playing this game for so long, it's like now I'm kind of bored. Oh, that's nice. So you can use the bomb, and then you get rid of all the crap around it. But then it regrows the crap. And so, well, here we are. Can we make... Oh, that was that's the screenshot button. <laughs> Your uh, Game Boy Advance may not have that feature. I honestly, I'm just come on. Let's just speed three now. Oh, I see. I accidentally changed my speed to three as opposed to two. I probably should keep it at three, huh? Pause. You press both buttons at the same time. Can you do some crazy nonsense? No, you just use enough bombs, and you too can beat the boss like a pro. Just remember, pros use bombs to, to model their way through everything. Try next stage. Oh, fourth mission, deep core. Now see, this mission looks a lot more exciting. It doesn't actually play a lot more exciting. It's still the same kind of slow, leisurely shoot em up pace. But if you look at the background, the background's moving pretty fast. I mean, it looks like this is exciting. And if you're playing this, if you're watching this at home, you might make the mistake of thinking I'm excited and I'm having fun in this game. I'm not. It's it's a little bit slow. So I press L and I use up the power? Yeah, I, I feel like some things could be explained a little bit better. But hey, it's a shoot 'em up. Those those are intuitive, right? There's only so much stuff that can happen. Oh wow, this is the most overpowered I've felt so far in this game. I can shoot in front of me and behind me. And at a fairly decent rate, too. I've always found it kind of interesting, like, the design philosophy between shooting forward and shooting behind. Like, it, it's kind of interesting, like, what balance do you strike? Do you shoot more ahead or do you shoot more behind? So some games will have it be equal. You shoot, like, half your shots forward, half your shots back. And some some games will do it where, like, you'll shoot more uh, forward than you do behind, like this game. But th this game kind of strikes a nice balance because you're only three halves more in the front than in the back. A lot of games will have it where, like, it's a three-to-one ratio where you get three shots in front and only one shot in back. I think Thunder Force 4 did that. Or, sorry, Lightning Force 4 for the Genesis. Oh, caution already. Does caution mean mini boss or final boss? You know, you telling me caution and then just immediately smashing me with the enemy doesn't help anybody. So I sacrificed one of my weapons to uh, just basically bypass this boss. It didn't really work. We are like on our last legs. Uh, we are on one ship. Place your bets. Does this game end at one life or zero lives? It was always kind of silly how video games can never quite get that down. It's like, does does play end when you're at zero or when you're at one? And I guess there's no interdimensional video game consortium. So we have to destroy the rest of them? What's the deal? There's no intergalactic video game consortium. You just kind of lay the issue to rest once and for all. Okay. So, uh, once again, a boss failed with the most deadly event weapons, Attrition. And, uh, oh, oh, jeez, oh my. Oh, zero lives, zero lives. And, uh, we may be on my last life, and we may already be down to half health, but darn it, at least we have the homing shot. Oh, jeez. These enemies just are not playing fair. Like, the enemies just kind of pop right in immediately. I guess I should be more disappointed, but honestly, I just want this game to end. So, I kind of welcome this release. 
Oh, darn. I was cheaped from behind. I wonder, did this game have a continue function? Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, gee, what a shame. Wait, so number one, they named themselves 144. That is a bad name, I would say. Oh, maybe it's some sort of reference, like that's when the game came out or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gotta take a screenshot of my high score. I mean, I earned it. I played through 15 minutes of it to get that high score. So, uh, Phalanx. For the Game Boy Advance. It was a Game Boy Advance shoot 'em up. And that forgives a lot of sins, right? But oh my gosh, this game is boring. It takes forever to shoot enemies. It moves slow. It doesn't even look that good. Honestly? Unfortunately, it's probably like, what, the, the third best shoot 'em up for the Game Boy Advance? So you kind of have to forgive it. I believe the best one was Gradius. Like, Gradius Galaxies or whatever, Gradius Legends, they actually made a new version of Gradius for the uh, Game Boy Advance, which which is an unusual level of support for the Game Boy Advance, because why uh, no one else even released anything for it, so what the heck. I wonder if Silent Scope can, counts as a shoot 'em up Aw oh, man, I can't even pass this off as my own gameplay, because it says demo in the upper right-hand corner. Way to out me, game. But, uh... Yeah... Unfortunately, there were so few shoot 'em ups for the Game Boy Advance, we have to start including the final level in Kirby's Dreamland, where you play as a shoot 'em up thing, and you kind of like do a shoot 'em up level. As like, I guess that technically qualifies as what the sixth best shoot 'em up on the Game Boy Advance. When you're desperate, you're desperate. I think the only system I can think of that has fewer shoot 'em ups would be the Pokemon Mini, but I'm pretty sure that game <laughs> actually probably had a shoot 'em up. And if you want to start counting homebrew. But homebrew, I mean, there's, there's a whole world of homebrew. I think actually they made like a uh, bullet hell simulator or something homebrew from Game Boy Advance. So if you're interested, uh, go check that out. I don't know what what subset of like technical levels would you have to be for that to be relevant. I guess if you had a K101 Revo but had like a bad computer and somehow could stream my videos, but like couldn't actually emulate things on your computer, which I think is actually impossible in this day and age. Especially if you want that full 1080p 60fps glory that we've been going with here. Even though on the Game Boy Advance, only like a quarter of the screen updates. <laughs> uh, but hey, that's how we keep the bit rates down. So it just it just repeats. And I mean, I guess this this opening scene was like kind of cool. It, it's kind of neat. It's not very well animated, but it is very well anime did. But, uh, nope, there's nothing more to see. Phalanx, pretty much, you, you saw the first level, you could kind of imagine how this was gonna go. I guess the only surprise is, oh, do they do the lava level or the water level? Well, they went water level. Well, we've seen all we can see, and even if there is more to see, it may not be worth seeing. So on that note, this cat's got a scat.